By devoting just six minutes each weekday for one year, you can read through the entire New Testament using David Servant's daily devotional, Heaven Word Daily. Order your copy at heavenword.tv. Thank you so much for joining me once again as we continue our chronological study through the entire New Testament. Our study today takes us back to Acts chapter 10, which I mentioned to you last time has got to be one of the most significant chapters from at least from a theological standpoint and from a long range standpoint that there is in the book of Acts. Why do I say that? Because we're gonna read uh, the unfolding story of the welcoming of Gentiles into the family of God simply by their repentance and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and nothing else. But it takes a while for the church to get uh, all that uh, understanding that we now have looking back at it, okay? So let's start again in Acts chapter 10, verse number one, real quickly. And now there was a man in Caesarea, coastal city on the Mediterranean, named Cornelius, a centurion. That means he's, a, he's an Italian guy of what was called the Italian cohort, okay? So he works for the Roman government. He's a Roman army officer over a hundred other Roman soldiers. Verse 2, he's described as a devout man. I want you to keep that in mind. He was a devout man. And, and how specifically was he devout? Well, the first thing that Luke writes is he's one who feared God. Wow. Feared God. Well, that means he's going to be endeavoring to obey God because he's uh, fearful of God. He's fearful of the consequences of disobeying God. Right? You say, well, how would he know how to obey God? Well, he had a God-given conscience that God has given everybody. All right? You know, Paul talked about that in his epistle to the Romans, that sometimes the Gentiles instinctively do what the law says to do because the law is written in their hearts. So the basic fundamental moral principles and ethical ideas, it's in people's hearts. So he feared God. Not only that, he was influential to motivate others to fear God because he feared feared God with all his household. He's the leader of the household. And so no doubt, you know, uh, he influenced them to some degree in their fear of God. Thirdly, he gave many alms to the Jewish people. Now, why was he giving them to the Jewish people? Because that's all there was. In Caesarea, you know, there, there was, of course, the Roman, uh, there was a hundred Roman soldiers there at least. I'm sure there were some other Romans living there, government officials and so on. But, you know, predominantly a Jewish city. Um, and he, he was to help the Jews. How is he helping them? He's giving them alms. Well, and, you know, who's he giving alms to? Just any Jew that passes by? No, alms are uh, contributions to the poor. And so he's helping widows, orphans, the handicapped, and so on, and he gives many alms to the, to the poor Jews. Okay, so there's evidence of the fear of God. There's evidence of a living faith, right? Sure. I mean, that's more evidence than uh, the majority of professing Christians have who give nothing to the poor. I just couldn't resist saying that because I say that so much, and it just, it's so important. And get this, he prayed to God continually. That's the end of verse number two. He prayed to God continually. So, you know, this is a man who, goodness, it seems like he has got some kind of a relationship with God. His heart is definitely wide open to God. And that gives us some clue as to why Peter was sent. Uh, they were, God connected him with Peter so he could hear the good news about Jesus Christ. You know? And uh, again, we don't know everything about Cornelius, but I just have, I can't help but ask the question, not saying that I have uh, the for sure answer. But if he had died before he was connected to Peter, would he have gone to heaven or hell? Well, let's just, let's just jump him back. Let's jump him back 20 years. 20 years, you know, which would have been 20 years before the death of Christ. 20 years before anyone heard of Christ. If he had died then and living this kind of a lifestyle, would God say, well, you never believed in Jesus? Couldn't have said that, right? Because he couldn't have believed in Jesus because there was no name of Jesus to really believe in. Let's, in fact, let's take him back 40 years before Jesus was even born. What happened to all those people, you know, who were like this, who were doing their best with their knowledge to serve God? You know, would he have gone to hell if he died? Now, 
those of you who know the Bible, you're going to object to that because you're going to say, well, wait a second, Peter will say in his defense before the, before the apostles in Jerusalem, you know, that God sent him to speak words so that Cornelius and his household could be saved. Okay, we'll cross that bridge and we come to it. I'm just trying to provoke your thinking a little bit. Right? Get this. Uh, about the ninth hour, this is verse number three uh, of the day, he clearly saw in a vision an angel of God who had just come in and said to him, Cornelius. So an angel visits him. And again, you'll see in the story that the, it's just a setup for him to go connect with Peter and uh, for Peter to come to him, actually, and to, for him to hear the gospel with his whole household and for them to be born again by the Holy Spirit. Now, here's what I want to talk about before I go on any further. This man, could be, and no doubt to some degree, is representative of many others who preceded him, some of whom we can read about in the Old Testament who were not Jews, but who had some kind of relationship with God, or they feared the true God. Cornelius had an advantage that he was living in a Jewish territory, he had access to hearing the word of God and so forth, but he certainly didn't have uh, an exemplary uh, you know, example of people who were true followers of the true God around him, uh, you know, because we know how far most of the Jewish leaders, for example, were from God at that time, you know. Uh, so that could have drawn him away from God as he saw their hypocrisy, hypocrisy and so forth. But his heart's tender. He knows there must be a God. He's got a conscience. He hears some scriptures read. He begins to believe. He realizes that God has dealt with the Jewish people and many Gentile people and Gentile nations. It's all in the Old Testament scriptures, prophecies to, to Egypt and prophecies to other Middle Eastern nations and so forth. He knows that he's connected to the God of creation, the God of gods, you know, and, and the Roman gods were all just the figment of a bunch of people's imaginations, but he's bucking the trend. And there's no excuse, again, for people that are living in regions dominated by false religions. They still have plenty of evidence for the true God and the truth, okay? More about this when we get together next time. And so I will see you next time. Heavenward 7 is made possible by the financial support of viewers like you. Thank you.